everybody. Uh, let me start off by saying sex is great <laughs> for your health. Just, <laughs> just get that. Um, and I'm here to elaborate on that. Um, what I mean by sex is great for your health is that there are benefits to having sex in regards to a person's health. If you guys didn't notice already, my claim today is that um, sexual intercourse is beneficial for one's health. First, let me go over some factual information that will express how sex supports health, yeah, specifically in regards to weight loss. Um, sex, as well as any other activity such as breathing or something more demanding like running, it burns calories since they're actions that require energy. Now, losing calories will help you, well, you'll have a great chance of losing weight. And losing weight will, in turn, lower, your, um, the, lower the health risks that come along with being obese or overweight, such as like plaque buildup in the arteries, which could lead to heart problems. Next, let me share some statistics um, in regards to, uh, in relation of sex and a stronger immunity. Um, Wilkes University, located in Northeast Pennsylvania, conducted research um, which concluded that people who have sex once or twice a week um, actually produce, have a higher production rate of an antibody known as immunoglobulin A. Um, and this amount increased by one third or 33%. That's, it's, this is really good. <clears throat> this means that having sex could actually help you fight against something like the common cold. Finally, we present um, a study that was conducted by Care Philly Study, which is a group located in Europe, as an example. In their study, uh, they had about 3,000 Welsh men, in ranging from the age of 45 to 59. And the study focused on the longevity of those men's lives. It's, as it turns out, those who had sex, a uh, greater occurrence of sex, actually had a lower mortality rate, mortality rate. And what that means is, basically, they had a lower chance of dying due to natural causes. All of these relations with sex and health are all beneficial to a person. Like you could lose all, you could burn all those calories, you could boost your immune system, and you could live a longer life. Thank you. All right, well, you used the topic, uh, the, uh, the claim is your attention device, that's kind of fun, and everybody knows what your point of view is right away, so I don't think that there's any problem there. Uh, you identify the different categories that you're putting your information in, so uh, it's easy for me to check those things off. I didn't hear any source citation on the information from factual data the, about weight loss and the number of calories burned. <coughs> so that's a little bit of an issue. I don't doubt that it's true, but uh, I did, like I said, I didn't hear the source citation on. On the other things, though, I did hear sources being cited uh, pretty consistently. Although uh, sometimes, like the, when you talked about the Welshman study, that's really the only way that you cited, as you mentioned, it's the study. You didn't tell us where you found the study, and that might have made a little bit more sense to add that in there. The statistical information I found <coughs> was a little better cited there. <coughs> Excuse me. That's not a cold, by the way, so we don't want to put that together with my weight and my having a cold, and you're making any inferences about stuff. Like that. That's not really appropriate. <laughs> and uh, uh, Scott's heritage, so uh, that's a little bit different. Um, I thought that uh, it was, like I said, nicely put together, easily structured. You, you, vocally, you do a good job. Uh, Nonverbally, it's kind of contradictory because I think you're very engaged. You've got gestures, and uh, when you look up, you seem animated, but there are lots of times when you are kind of pacing back and forth and just reading and, and not really talking to us, and so there's some inconsistency on those things. All right. I have a question. All right. So uh, 